The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and it is a of the All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, we learn a great lesson from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. The mammon of unrighteousness are greater, and they are very happy when they think they can act prudently, disposing the responsibility laid down upon their shoulders. Here at least, the economia who has been kept over there in charge, administrator, had a chance to think that he didn't, he didn't have the strength to go and dig it out. Either he's having a face to go and request unto the Lord a greater forgiveness. He conceived, he pursued in his mind, and he thought, I will do the better thing. He went, the one who was owing 100, he said to write 50. The one who was owing 80, he said, you write 50. Likewise, we know what he created in his plan. And he was very happy to make them to tell, write quickly a bill, and say that you owe only so much, you owe only so much. But in the reality it was 100, he made 50. In the reality it was 80, he made again 50. And he was happy with the people because he knew that he's going to lose his administrating work, stewardship, ministry. And he knew very well that economy, when it has been gone, the home laws, he cannot survive, so he thought the people for whom I have made it 50 and the people who have made it less, they can occupy with me and I can be happy over them. At least this economy in the parable had a time, had a chance to go and beg so that the people or the workers who have taken loan, they have been compromised to write 50 and 30. But the same passage, when you look to the ministry of a pastor teacher laid down upon the shoulders, he cannot come and ask you, who have been given under his care at the judgment seat of Christ, to tell, I have not shown to declare the entire counsel of God. But rather, he, will, he, he doesn't have any chance to come and ask you at the judgment seat of Christ to tell. Please write 50 if it was 100. Please write 50 if it was 80 because every believer will be judged nakedly, nakedly in the sense each and everything they have done. And everything, if they have not been reached the status of maximum glorification of Christ, then they will come to the point of realization why they have not come to the principal power of life and the Holy Spirit in learning the truth. And every time they need to answer back to my Lord, why I have done that? Since it is the omniscient knowledge of God, our Lord knows very well before there is a word on our tongue. The pastor teacher, if they are really being given the bona fide gift, and the pastor teacher failed to really execute that bona fide gift into the reality of the word, and give back and take number one priority, the pastor teacher who failed to take that responsibility is now utterly responsible to be judged. And here in parable we find that the law, that the master or the Lord will come and take away his stewardship, what he has heard about him. But there in the heaven, this pastor teacher who has failed to communicate the word through his concept and dispensing, dispensing technique of dispensations, will have a very stricter judgment. A judgment often reminded for us in James 3, 1 and 2, not many men to become pastors. The judgment often reminds for us in Acts 26 and 27, Acts 28, chapter 26 and 27.
to be very careful because you will be having to carry their own blood upon your head if you don't teach them the truth. If they are ignoring the truth, you should be in a position to tell, As Lord, I have taught them the entire doctrine. And here the steward tells, I don't have strength to dig. Even we, as believers, don't have strength. But it is the operative will of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, working in us effectively to dig out the truth and give to you because we love you. Because of the love that we have towards the Lord God the Father, it is our duty to definitely sustain the truth, to dig the truth, and to get back to the truth, and make truth as number one priority in our life. There is no compromise for us apart from the truth. We can do anything. It is the truth, the truth, and the truth alone. We cannot say X, Y, Z trends. We cannot tell that we have done this, we have done that. No, no way, dear brother. And you have a shame to ask forgiveness to the Lord. But my Lord says, rebound, get back to fellowship and learn Bible doctrine and teach Bible doctrine faithfully. If you are a minister, after listening to this tape, if you are still ashamed to take the responsibility laid down upon your shoulders, in the privacy of your soul, when you confess your sin directly to Lord God the Father, in the privacy of your priesthood, in your soul, and you come back and put foundation once again because apostasy begins in the pulpits and apostasy can be put an end in the pulpits. If it is not so, then you will be lost. If you are ashamed, ashamed of what? To go and beg your master what you have done, absolutely that will be a remorse, that will be a guilt in you. Because the work which should be done with the exegesis, proper isagogics, proper categorization of the subject, you have left it out to the things pertaining to the sheer arts of oratory, to the things pertaining to miracles, healings, or tongues, which is nowhere related in the Bible for you after the completion of the Or does the word say in the declaration of John 21 to the commission given to Peter, feed, 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 Bosco, Paidia, Bosco? If you have fondness of love towards me, if you have the tears towards me, if you have the preciousness of reverence towards me, then feed. I feed my flock. Tend my flock. Feed my flock. Where is your love towards God? If you have failed, ashamed, Peter says, for the third time grieving in his heart, for the three times he rejected my Lord. And then to he says, yes, Father, I will do thy will. Or a great lesson we need to learn. The day by day process what we need to take. The reality what we need to inculcate. Learning the word more accurately is important, dear brethren, than anything else in this world. Feeding the word is more important to the pastor, teacher, to the congregation than anything else of work in this earth. Do you know what was a great honor given to Joshua? He was being called as a servant of the Lord. And there cannot be any other great honor to these people who can want, who want to realize, want to take, want to learn. Then to have a great reward of Jehovah to tell that he has been my faithful, unprofitable slave, who has rightly divided the word of truth. Rather than calling you as an unjust steward, if my Lord calls you, well done, take a part in my life. You have been faithful in little things, and I will make you to be faithful in greater things. There cannot be any other great honor for a past teacher than that. As there was a great honor to Joshua ending out that he was a servant of the law. What else we require in this world, dear brethren? Your honor, your title to become prime minister, president, chief minister, or governor of the state is required? No. Humbly enough to call that you are a just steward, that you are a faithful worker, and Lord can rely upon you for greater things because you have been faithful in small things. That is enough in this life.
ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with the Lord. We pray that Lord get the Holy Spirit with enlightenment on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.